Dear colleagues, I'm Dr. Tural Alek Berli from Azerbaijan, working currently in Israel as an anesthesiologist, presenting today our prospective analytic basic science and a comparative observational study titled The Correlation Between High Sensitivity Troponin T and Cell-Free Cardiac DNA in the Blood of Patients Undergoing Non-Cardiac Surgery. The diagnosis of MI is primarily based on elevated troponin levels. This is based on the abundance of literature demonstrating the high sensitivity and specificity of troponin and its high prognostic value for short and long-term cardiac morbidity and mortality. Studies have shown that even a minimal increase in troponin predicts increased cardiac morbidity and mortality. However, most patients with minimal troponin increase don't present with symptoms of MI and if not for the abnormal test result, wouldn't have been diagnosed with MI. This entity of asymptomatic patients with increased troponin levels is called silent troponin elevation or STE. Whether silent postoperative myocardial troponin elevation represents irreversible myocardial injury is debated. In this study, we used a novel method that uses an epigenetic fingerprint to measure changes in plasma concentrations of self, uh, cardiac specific cell free DNA as a marker of myocardial cell death. Patients aged more than 50 years with known heart disease or multiple risk factors for heart disease undergoing major non cardiac surgery requiring uh, intraarterial line for hemodynamic monitoring and at least 24 hours of hospitalization planned in the post-anesthesia care unit or critical care unit after surgery were studied. Blood samples were collected for high sensitive troponin T and cell-free uh, cardiac DNA pre and post-surgery. Blood samples were obtained simultaneously from the arterial line for troponin T and cell-free DNA before surgery, one hour after surgery, at midnight, and in the morning after surgery. Troponin was measured routinely in the hospital's laboratory. Samples for cell-free DNA were centrifuged twice and plasma was stored for later batch analysis. Cell-free DNA measurements was based on uh, comparative metallome analysis of genomic loci that are unmetallated only in cardiomyocytes. By using specific primers, PCR after bisulfit treatment and next-generation DNA sequencing, the cardiac-specific methylation markers allow us to quantify circulating cell-free DNA derived from dying cardiac cells. In this figure, we see all study groups patients have uh, consisted of uh, group, four groups based on their troponin results. As you see, every group has four troponin results. The first one is uh, preoperative and the other three are postoperative. Group one had 77 patients, which is 66%, with low preoperative and postoperative troponin levels. Group 2 had 18 patients, which is 15%, uh, with low preoperative but increased postoperative troponin levels. Group 3 had 16 patients, 14%, with high troponin levels both preoperative and postoperatively. Group 4 had 6 patients, uh, 5%, with elevated preoperative troponin levels that decreased postoperative troponin levels. Cell-free DNA samples were uh, processed in the DOR laboratory at Hebrew University Medical School. Results in each group were analyzed, taking into account clinical history and troponin results. This table shows that uh, the amount of cell-free DNA copies in milliliters in each group before and after surgery. A comparison of each group's cell-free DNA was only significant in one group. In group two, cell-free DNA increased early after surgery, particularly in patients with silent uh, postoperative myocardial troponin elevation. 
An increase in cell-free DNA was also correlated with an increase in troponin results in a group with low troponin and low cell-free DNA preoperatively. We also compared all preoperative and postoperative cell-free DNA results and found that the postoperative cell-free DNA was higher than preoperative cell-free DNA, which was statistically significant. These results suggest that in the subgroup of patients with elevated troponin levels post-surgery, there is indeed cardiomyocyte death. More work with larger patient population and additional measurements is justified to understand the underlying mechanisms and the clinical significance of these findings and reach definite conclusions regarding the potential utility of cell-free DNA for monitoring cardiomyocyte loss in surgery. Thank you for your attention.